Today you're going to do a little bit more realistic, in-depth cross-comparison between the Sennheiser MKH416, made in Germany, the industry standard, and the Australian-made Rode NTG3. Both are uh, rather heavy, brass-bodied shotguns. The Rode NTG3 is a hotter microphone. Uh, it has a more deep end and it has less uh, lateral side rejection than the Sennheiser MKH416. Um, at the top of this video I will give you a link to download a cross comparison. <whistles> right here will be the link um, between the uh, Sennheiser MKH416 and the Rode NTG3 so you'll be able to compare the two and you will see um, that the Rode NTG3 has less self noise than the Sennheiser MKH416. Also, the MKH416 has a much greater lateral side rejection. So, if you're not so skilled at uh, shotgun miking with a boom pole, the Rode NTG3 is far more forgiving than the Sennheiser MKH416, which has much greater directionality. Which one is a superior build quality? Um, I am uniquely qualified, and I don't mean that jokingly, to determine uh, what sort of build quality something is. I mean, I've handled so many different uh, devices that uh, have a great deal of handiwork in them, and between the two, I would actually say that uh, the Rode NTG3, cost being irrelevant, we're not talking about cost here, we're talking about sound and talking about build quality. Ultimately, all that matters is sound and what you plan on using it for. The Rode NTG3 uh, actually slightly edges out uh, the industry standard the Sennheiser MKH416 in a slightly superior build quality. Uh, now you might say that's a subjective opinion, but there are actually empirical criteria that uh, show that the uh, Rode NTG3 has a superior build quality ever so slightly uh, to that of the Sennheiser MKH416. Being half German myself, I'll be the first to say that the Germans and their uh, production of materials have always had a cracker up their fanny when it comes to uh, slightly overpriced gear relative to uh, some other European countries. And while Australia obviously isn't Europe, it kind of falls into the range of, let's just call it European production quality, if not possibly superior. So the Rode NTG3 wins over the Sennheiser MKH416. Obviously, nobody can see that in the final production of what you're doing, so all that matters is the sound. So, let's get down to sound. Let's get down to brass tacks. Um, the MKH416, I'm about to show you in a second on the spectrogram, has slightly less self-noise than that of the uh, MKH416. The MKH416 has much superior lateral ejection than that of the Rode NTG3, which is more forgiving and uh, has a less directionality than that of this of the uh, 416. Um, uh, the reason that the Sennheiser MKH416 is basically the industry standard is that the easiest way to put it in terms you could possibly understand is that the Sennheiser MKH416 has all the uh, superior qualities of a large diaphragm condenser studio microphone and all the uh, superior qualities of a shotgun uh, lateral rejection. So it has all the positive attributes of a high directionality shotgun microphone and yet at the same time a full robust sound like a large density studio condenser. Uh, the Rodin TG3 uh, does suffer a little bit uh, too much on the low end. It is a little bit too bassy. And uh, it, uh, the differentiation, uh, all subjectivity aside, the, uh, I'll give you the audio sample up here at the top where you can listen to that and see if you're listening for yourself. The uh, Sennheiser MKH416 MKH uh, is not airy which would be harsh, like the ME66 or 64 Sennheiser, the lower uh, end models of the Sennheisers. But the Rode NTG3 suffers a little bit too much in the bass, and uh, some uh, video uh, audio engineers have noticed that uh, when they tried to use uh, both the Sennheiser MKH416 and the NTG3 and uh, get levels the same at the end, that they kind of wanted to pull their hair out and messing with the Rode NTG3 and it was just too much to mess with and they utterly rejected the Rode NTG3 at the end. Does that mean that the Rode NTG3 is in any way in fear? No. Sound is obviously subjective but there is a reason why the Sennheiser MKH416 is a superior industry standard and basically it is as I told you without going into great enormous detail the Sennheiser MKH416 really has all the positive creds of a full robust 
untainted flat response sound of a large diaphragm studio condenser, like a Caddy 100S, and yet at the same time has all the positive attributes of a shotgun, which makes it a perfect ideal product to use, and why it is the industry standard over that of the Rode NTG3. Money being irrelevant. Now, you can have a Rode NTG3, uh, same as new, basically new, all day long for $500. That's basically what they're down to now. People that actually piss off road because they're selling under map, they can be had all day long new for $500 US. And that's as far as the Sennheiser MKH416, you have to watch for watch out for Chinese knockoff copies. Don't even think about buying one from Hong Kong. But a genuine, real, new in the box Sennheiser MKH416 can be had new in box although it's under suggested retail, far under suggested retail, can be had for $800. So you're looking at $500 versus $800. But all that matters ultimately is sound. So we're talking about $300 spread between your two. The difference used to be a lot greater. Let's uh, take a look at uh, some of the self noise out of the uh, Rode NTG3. It is a significant bit less. This obviously can be removed. I'm right now I'm using um, Adobe Audition. And this is... Now those noises, they are handling noises by me. That is the Sennheiser MKH416. So the 416 does have a little bit more uh, self-noise, all conditions being equal than that of the Rode NTG3. So the NTG3 wins out over the... Uh, Sennheiser MKH416. Now we'll listen to 12 inches off axis. Remember the audio file will be up here at the top. Let's listen to the Rode NTG3 first with 12 inches of, uh, of lateral displacement. And you can see that the NTG3 uh, does not have anywhere near as much directionality as the Sennheiser. First let's listen to the Rode NTG3. Okay, currently we have 12 inches roughly off axis. Uh, pointed up. Still rather robust, even though I'm 12 inches off axis. Uh, now let's look at the Sennheiser in their identical situation. And let's, we'll be able to hear the directionality difference. Away from my mouth, we are about a foot and a half away. So you'll notice that uh, we have more lateral uh, rejection of the interference tube. Okay, that was the Sennheiser MKH 416. So, the final consensus is up to you. The Rode NTG3 is a hotter mic. It is a more sensitive mic, uh, not substantially so. I uh, leveled out the two uh, so you can get a good comparison. But I actually have to increase more gain to the Sennheiser MKH416 than to that of the Rode NTG3. NTG3 is slightly superior build quality, but obviously nobody can see that. Ultimately, all that matters is the sound. Both are heavy brass bodied shotgun microphones. Uh, the Sennheiser MKH416 is the industry standard. It does have a full, more robust, uncolored, flat response and has higher directionality, unquestionably, all opinions aside, than to that of the Rode NTG3. New all day long, both of them, $500 versus $800. Money is ultimately irrelevant. Obviously, it's not to some people, but we're comparing uh, one shotgun mic to the other. Um, so superior quality over the Sennheiser MKH416, slightly more sensitive. However, uh, colored on the low end, uh, not a very flat response, less directionality than that of the Sennheiser MKH416. Um, so those are the attributes you need to consider. Um, both are extremely good resellers if for some reason you're disappointed with one or the other uh, selling a Sennheiser or a Rode NTG3. Just easy very easy to get rid of either one they both seem to be equally sought after in the used department good used department um yes the road is made slightly better slightly better build quality than the sennheiser mkh 416 but like i said you have better directionality better flat sound response more robust full sound uh, you do have slightly less self noise obviously uh Editing can take care of that very easily in Audacity, like I do all the time. So you got less self-noise in the Rode NTG3. It is a hotter mic. It is much more forgiving if you're not skilled at boom miking than the Sennheiser. The Sennheiser has much greater directionality. So you got to be right point on with the Sennheiser. So that's a more full, robust review for YouTube. At least it's the most robust review I've seen.
I've seen all the other ones on YouTube, so... And uh, download the audio sample will be linked right up here. Uh, recorded in 24-bit, um, 48K WAV format on both. Identical situation on both. Um, uh, the Sennheiser MKH416 is the second microphone tested, and it starts at uh, 35 or 36 seconds in. Thanks for watching. Now you have a full informed decision based upon some empirical data to make a more informed decision and purchase.